Hi everybody and welcome back to the Goody Pantry. So today we're going to be making some bubble and squeak croquettes. Now this is great to use up the mashed potato that you've got left from your Sunday roast, which is what I did here, I had some mashed potato left, so I decided to make some croquettes. But I'm also going to show you how you can take that up a notch if you want to. So there's the ingredients for what you saw in the picture. Let's get straight on the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit it. Don't forget to leave a comment and hit the bell icon. Here we go. So there's my leftover mash. I've got one white onion. I've got one sweetheart cabbage. I've got some panko breadcrumbs and a couple of eggs. So this is going to be for the croquettes themselves. So if you just want to make the croquettes, you absolutely can. So here I've got a white onion. I'm just going to chop that up into a, a, a small dice. It doesn't need to be finely diced. You want some texture. So as you can see here, I'm leaving a good gap in between the onions. If you want it smooth, then by all means you can finely dice, but I think having a bit of texture is what makes these croquettes taste a lot better. So now we're going to go on the cabbage, so just cut that in half, cut the bottom off, and then take out your core. If you're not sure how to do this, just cut it in half like that, and just cut the V around the core, and it'll just pop straight out. So then again, I'm just doing so like similar what I did with the onion, but I'm going to leave the cabbage slightly bigger. So I'm going to cut that down to that length, and then I'm going to shred it. I will bring it up to the camera so you can see exactly how large I made it. So when you get that ready, get a pan on and get your onions in like this and just start with a little bit of oil, start cooking them down. Now this will be take about a minute and a half and they'll go from this to this where you can just see the start of the colour. Now this only literally only takes, like I said, a minute and a half. Once we've got that done, we're now going to add the cabbage. Now you can see that it's quite low, but as this sautés, it's going to reduce down. So don't worry about how much it looks like now, because it is going to look a lot less once it's cooked. So I'm going to put my teaspoon of mustard in now, and I'm going to put, run this through, and this is going to cook as it sautés. And it's good to do it this way because it gets the taste of the mustard right throughout and balances it out a lot better than if you just dumped it in at the end. So you're going to do that and you're going to cook this now for about two minutes. And I'm going to show you what it's going to look like after two minutes. So as you can see, it's right up to the top of the pan. But then after you start cooking it for two minutes... That's what it looks like now. So you can see the green colours come out more, but it's also, it's gone down in the pan. So we're just going to continue cooking this now for another couple of minutes. And now it looks like that. Now as you see, it's really gone down now, which is what you want. So don't be worried when you first pour it in of how much is in the pan. So now I'm just going to season to my own taste, just do this yourself, however much seasoning you like. So I'm now going to keep cooking this now for about another five to six minutes until the cabbage is nice and soft. This is what it's like, so on total I've cooked this for about 8 to 9 minutes and I try to paste and the cabbage is nice and soft now. So now I'm going to start adding my potato. So just add potato, your potato cold and what this does, it'll just bring down the temperature of what's in the pan and make it it's easy to cool it basically. So just add it a spoonful at a time and just keep mixing it. So now you're going to add your next scoop of potato. And you're just going to keep repeating this process until it's all mixed in. So you have the last scoop of mine going in. And again, just repeat. 
until you've got a nice bubble and squeak mix just like that. So once that's done, transfer your mix to a bowl, and then you just want to get that in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour just to let it curl. And once it's curled, you can take it out and now just get a good handful and then roll it into a bowl and then roll it into a cylinder. Now I'm making quite large croquettes as you saw in the picture at the start. If you do want to make smaller ones, you absolutely can just, just use less in your hands and you can get more out, but I prefer the, a bigger croquette. So once you go into a cylinder shape like that, just keep repeating until you've got the rest done. I've got 10 out of mine. If you're doing smaller ones, you'll get some more. So now I've got these on a tray and I'm going to pop these in the freezer for 30 minutes. If you can't get them in the freezer, just put them in the fridge but for 90 minutes. So now I've got my flour, my beaten eggs and my breadcrumbs. So what you want to do, just roll the bubbling squeak croquettes in the flour. And once you've got a good coating, just pat it from side to side in your hands, just like I'm about to do, just to shake off the excess flour. And then roll that around in the egg mix, make sure you get it all covered around on the ends. And then into your breadcrumbs, and just roll them around in the breadcrumbs. And that's your croquette made. So you now you're just going to repeat that process with the others, until you've got them all done. So now that I've done, I've got my oil on a pan, and this oil's up to 160. So now I'm just going to drop my croquettes in. I'm just going to do three at a time. And I'm going to let them cook. Now once they've been in for about 20 to 30 seconds, that's all it takes, you can start moving around like this. At that point, the heat's done its job. It's got the breadcrumbs stuck on. So now you start moving around. And you want to continuously move them just gently move them around the pan it's what will give you an even cook on the breadcrumbs and make sure they all color evenly as well so these are going to be in for about three minutes and there's the three minutes you can see how nicely they've colored now if you find your breadcrumbs do cook a lot quicker than mine just means your temperature and your pan's been a bit higher but don't worry about it. Just get take them out when they look like that. Put them on the tray. Put them in the oven for two to three minutes. And that will finish them heating them through. So once you've got them, take them out. And then leave them to drain on a tray. And then just repeat this process until you've done all your croquettes. And once you've got them all done... That's them done, and you can have them whichever way you want, or whichever with anything that you want to have them with. I know everybody's different what they like with their bubble and squeak. These can go with anything, though, yeah, absolutely anything, and they did taste quite nice. But I'm also going to show you now how you can take this and just elevate it a little in case you you just fancy something different for a change. So let me show you something I used to make before. So okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a pan on and we're going to make some hollandaise sauce. Now I've done this a few times, this dish, with the croquettes, poached egg, pancetta and hollandaise. So let me show you how. Hollandaise sauce isn't anything tough as long as you follow these steps. So you want two egg yolks on a pan of water. Now there's only about two inches of water in there and you don't want it boiling. You just want steam. And you're going to keep whisking your egg yolks like this and then take it off. Take it off for about 10 seconds and then pop it back on. Because what you don't want to do, you don't want to cook the eggs. Otherwise you'll end up with scrambled eggs. You just want to get the heat in. So now I'm adding my lemon juice, about two tablespoons. And I'm going to whisk it again. Now you see it's gone thin again. But it only takes a matter of seconds, as you can see now, for it to start thickening back up. So when you're doing your hollandaise, just be, do this. But just make sure you keep it mixing. And just make sure your temperature doesn't get high. This is the key for hollandaise. And if you need to, just keep lifting it up and off just like I have. So when your egg yolks are like this, you can pop them back down. Now we're going to add our butter. Now, this is the best way to do this, is to add your butter in little cubes, but cold out the fridge. What this does, it stops the egg yolks being able to get too hot and cooking. So there's enough heat there to melt the butter, but there's also the butter, because it's cold, it will stop 
them cooking because you don't want to cook the sauce. So just keep repeating this process and adding it a couple at a time until all your butter's melted. Once you've got that all in and it's like this, now I'm just going to take mine off now because them little lumps that are left are just going to melt in the butter off the pan. So there's my Hollandaise sauce ready. And you see, lovely smooth, as in broken. So now just give it a quick taste and make sure it's to your liking for the lemon juice and then season it. I used the salted butter, so I'm not adding any salt, but I'm going to add some pepper. So now I'm going to transfer my Hollandaise sauce into a little jug. And as you can see, you can see how thick the Hollandaise sauce is now. And then I'm just going to cover this to keep it warm. And now we're going to do our egg. Now normally I wouldn't have done this, but I know some people struggle with poached eggs. So I'm just going to show you the best way to do it. Get a pan of water on. And when it's just about simmering, give it a little stir like this. And as it starts to die down, but you can still see the whirl going, drop your egg in the center. Now you're just going to leave this now, about a minute, let the egg just do its thing. After the minute, just gently touch the egg. All you're checking for here, it hasn't stuck to the bottom, which it never really does. But just gently touch the egg and it'll see it move around. Once that's done, get a sp uh, slotted spoon and just remove those bits from the top. Now you can see what I've got with my egg here. It's not even simmering. It's just sitting in a hot water. And this is going to sit here for another minute and a half. And then after the minute and a half, I'm going to lift my egg up. And what you should be able to see, when you touch the whites, it'll be firm. But when you touch the yolk, it'll be very, very soft. That's what you want. And now you're going to lift that out and put that to one side. So now we have all our ingredients ready. So we have our two croquettes. We have our nice soft poached egg. We have our homemade hollandaise. And then here I have some pancetta that I just did in the air fryer. Literally cooked this for about seven minutes and it came up nice and crispy. And then just to finish it off with a little bit of rocket. And there we have it guys. Something really different and all just stems from leftover mashed potato. Uh, so yeah, I used to make this regular, especially when I worked in the kitchens. And um, I never come across anybody after the tried who didn't enjoy it. It really is a... A totally unique dish and it does taste fantastic with the bubbling squeak in the croquettes and there it is i right, hope you enjoyed watching this one guys uh don't forget like and subscribe hit the bell icon stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to leave a comment if you make this and let me know how you got on or if you want to see something made let me know Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.